Everybody, welcome back to the Greg Nerds Corner, and I just want to start off by apologizing that it's been ooh, probably well over a week since I got a video out. Um, I had to take a little break from NATO's nukes and Nazis. I will be returning to the video, my video gameplay series on that, and I'll get more into detail on why I had to take another break from NATO nukes and Nazis when I get back to recording that. However, I realized I needed to cleanse my palate a little bit. I needed to get something else on the table, get something else working. And yeah, I was sat and I looked over my games and I pulled one down. I pull out the rules and eh, put it back up on the shelf, pull out another one and look at it. It's like, ah, eh, counters are too dark. You can't read the, read the, read the, read the typeface on them. So that's not going to fill them real well and put that back on the shelf and draw another game down and pull out the rules. And eh, I don't want to do this one, put it back on the shelf. So it took me like five days to just finally get to the point where, all right, we've got to make a decision. So here we are looking at the game I finally eventually decided on. Mosby's Raiders, Guerrilla Warfare in the Civil War. And I would like to point out that in this, this case, we're talking about... Uh, partisan enemy actions behind enemy lines not actual um apes fighting with each other i i know not all my listeners and all my viewers you're all geniuses i i will go ahead and say that but i know there's a couple of you out there that just probably aren't up to par and so i just wanted to make that clear for a little bit but <laughs> this is mosby's raiders from Victory Games, and uh, if you listen to my podcast and watch my video cast, you know I love Victory Games, one of my favorite game companies in existence. But anyways, Mosby's Raiders, basically, let's go ahead and take a look at the back here and see exactly what the game description is. All right, in 1863, oops. General Hooker's army was strongly entrenched along the Rappahannock River and ready to march on Richmond. Richmond. Behind, <laughs> beginning with only nine men, John Mosby began his famous guerrilla raids behind Union lines in northern Virginia. Thanks to his tireless energy, he would wreak havoc against Hooker's army over the next months, destroying war materials, blowing up bridges and railroad tracks, attacking Union forces sent out to capture him, and kidnapping unsuspecting Union officers. Now, you can relive the exploits of Mosby and his partisan rangers in this new exciting solitaire game. And, you know, it's, you know... Solitaire game, got the features, got a view of the map, you know, some counters right there. And of course, Victory Games patented lovely complexity solitaire suitability level. Hey, look at that. Solitaire suitability. Very high. Pretty good for a solitaire system, if you ask me. Um now I, I am I am gonna I'm gonna segue a little bit. I'm gonna say a little thing before I before I actually get into the unboxing. Now I know there are some of you out there, and I really hope none of you are my listeners because I, I well let's not get into that. I know there are people out there who are gonna go, Ooh, he's playing a game of the Confederates. He must be a racist southern bastard. No, you effing morons, I'm pushing little cardboard counters around representing a historical action that took place in the dim recesses of our past. If there was a Union game of Union Raiders that Victory Games had published and was solitaire and that I owed, I would probably be highlighted on that. But I'm not. This is the game I'm playing. It does not make me a Confederate bastard. So... If you are out there and you actually do think like that, just stop listening. Stop watching now, all right? I just, I just, just, I don't understand how people like that are in the gaming community, but they're out there. So anyways, let's crack this sucker open. Now, I will say, this uh, came out late 80s, early 90s. No, 
1985. This, after I got out of the service, is probably one of the only games I picked up right after I got out of the service, and one of the few that survived the purging when I uh, was forced to sell so many of my games. Now, I'm not really sure why I hung on to this one. Uh, I have actually never played this. I tried getting it on the table once when I bought it, and I just couldn't make it through the rules. As we've said before, I'm not a clever man. Fortunately, the older I've gotten, uh, the more intellectual depth I've been able to to accure and... Uh, and uh, uh, just a little bit smarter when it comes to rules. So we're going to be watching me try to bumble my way through this for the first time, even though I've owned this game for, you know, 20, 25, 20, no, 21 years. Yeah. Anyways, so let's crack this sucker open. So let's take a look. First off. We got the rules of play, and they're in your typical victory games, Avalon Hill, you know, double paragraph, you know, probably what, 12 font, you know, descriptions of all the counters, and then it goes into the game terms. Now, this may seem like a thick rule book. I mean, it's, what is it? I don't know, 32 pages? But let's actually just take a look at this. The rules actually aren't that much. Um, you know, you've got designer notes interspersed throughout the rules every once in a while. Um, got some pretty cool historical etchings on here. And some little historical flavor. Let's see if I can get out there, you know. <laughs> I like that one. In a, the enemy complained that we did not fight fair. The same complaint was made by the Austrians against Napoleon. Well, war is not supposed to be fair. So, goes into all the different actions you can do. Another nice little, little etching right there. But really, when you get down to it, you know, there's 13 pages of rules. The actual rules themselves are only 13 pages. And you've got a couple pages of optional rules. So that's not too bad. And then we go into some uh, commentary by uh, Eli Eric Smith. Or, yeah, Eric Lee Smith. You may know that name. He, 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 he was kind of big at Victory Games and uh, SPI before that. He did Ambush. I'm sure everybody's familiar with Ambush. He designed that. He did a bunch of other games as well. But I think Ambush was probably his most popular. So there's some uh, historical commentary on Mosby, which goes on for a couple pages. And then we have some designer notes, about a page worth of designer's notes, and some bibliography. You don't really see bibliographies much anymore. Uh, at least I don't really rec remember seeing many bibliographies in game notes, but you got some nice bibliographies here. Then you've got fully illustrated diagrams, examples of play several pages worth. And this is one thing that I always loved about Victory Games. Avalon Hill didn't do it too much, and SPI didn't do it too much, but Victory, the guys over at Victory Games, they love putting in illustrated examples of play, which makes figuring out the rules hugely, hugely popular. Um, and then you've got uh, action card summaries, because there are action cards and random events, and there's, you know, several pages going over the different events and random events and now i'm sure i read all those random all the random events years ago uh, i haven't bothered to look in the cards um because basically i wanted to be kind of a surprise my first playthrough so you'll see my surprise when i run into it uh and then the sequence of play at the back so and when you get down to it i mean not too much in the sequence of play very detailed in what you can do in each you know step one step two step three and you know we got a good paragraph i mean you could probably play the game just off of the sequence of play because because the sequences are so are so uh so well done so that's the rule book and let's go ahead and take a look. Here are the action cards. Bunch of action cards. Now, action cards are the things that uh, modify Mosby's actions when you're doing them. Um, there's some... 
I call them get out of jail free cards where you can ignore wounds and you know they modify your attacks and modify your attack uh, your movement and allow you to sneak around so you know there's probably about 64 of those um, that's all is good and then you got probably more than that in the random events. Um, now, like I said, I'm not I'm not going to go through and look at these before I start playing game. I want the random events to be well random, so I don't I don't want to be able to prepare for them. Um, but yeah, you know, probably 64 to 80 random events, and I'm sure there are multiples in there. And random events represent uh, actions that are outside Mosby's control. Um, and you've got some counters. We've got some round counters here, and these are for for unknown Union forces. So don't have to worry about clipping these. They're already clipped. Now, you didn't see a lot of round counters from Avalon Hill or Victory Games. Really, the only other Avalon Hill game that I can think of off the top of my head that used round counters was Luftwaffe. Um, and honestly, I can't think of any other Victory Games that used round counters. Something that should have been used a little bit more often, but it does waste a little bit more cardboard because there's always that more space in between the counters. So you don't get as many count round counters on a sheet as you do with the square counters. Um, and then you've got the actual Union forces and, you know, the different strength points and, you know, there's a, you know, Sutter's Wagon and, uh, you know, just various different infantry strengths that Mosby can either, you know, engage or try to run away from. These will be getting clipped, um, probably to do that after I get done with the video. Uh, then you got some bigger counters here. Uh, blown bridges, blown railroad tracks, you know, you can kidnap uh, Union officers. There's a Colonel Delaney who gets get kidnapped. And there's a stores counter you can try to get. And the cool thing, let me see if I can dig into here and find him. The actual Mosby counter himself is actually kind of this stand-up counter that you move around the battlefield to represent where you are as Mosby. So I thought that was kind of cool. Again, something you really never saw much in, you know, victory or games or Avalon, or really many war games. You see these a lot in role-playing games. I remember uh, Battletech used these exact same clips to stand their mechs up. Maybe I should do a video on old-school Battletech one of these days. God knows I've got enough of this stuff. And here I am destroying my counter on camera. So, yeah, these are going to get clipped as well. Uh, we got a map of the West Virginia area. You know, it's your typical full-color map. Areas are done by circles, so it's area movement. It's not hexes. Um, haven't really fully gone over the rules, so I can't really say what everything is. I do know these big blue hexagonals are Union uh, areas of, uh, of uh, it will basically where the Union Army was stationed at. So, you know, you're going to want to try to avoid there. But it's got all the stuff you need. You know, it's got the, the turn record track and your notoriety track and then all the charts and everything that you need as well. So, you know, it's a very, very complete, colorful uh, workable map and the scale is uh, what is it four miles to the inch so that kind of gives you a good idea and uh, you got the major major areas you know Leesburg Garland Mills Aldi Middleburg you know White Plains Salem <sighs> Pig Nut Mountain the hell does something get named Pig Nut Mountain so <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know, we got Waterloo down here too as well. And hey, New Baltimore. Like they really, really were struggling for unique and original names back in the East when we were founding this country, I guess. So, serviceable map. Very nice, really, very colorful. Not very big. We like that. Um, and the other thing, of course, obligatory six-sided dice. woo -hoo. And the other thing that, that SPI games love to put in with their games are these counter trays. Now, this is kind of a holdover from, uh, uh, or not SPI games, <laughs> some of the Victory games used to do. This is kind of a holdover from their SPI days when they used to do their quad games and they would have the trays, and not even their quad games, but most of their games, period, would have these counter trays in them. Um, 
for the quad, the old SPI quad games, and for the normal games that were flat boxes, it's great. However, I've seen other companies try to use these for you know Avalon Hill style bookcase games. It's fine when you keep the game box flat, but most people put bookcase games like this. You get too many counters in there, it gets jostled a little bit, and all of a sudden your counters are falling all over the place. Now, could you just go ahead and stack your boxes like this? Yes, but it doesn't look as cool. I mean, those are, those are some of my bookcase games, and you just kind of put them like a bookcase, like a book on the bookcase. I mean, if they were, you know, I've got some games that, you know, are set flat like that, and it's like, eh, whatever. It doesn't look as pretty as that does. So, anyways, I don't like using these counter trays unless it's on a flat box game. So there, that's it. There it is. That's the uh, quick rundown on the components of Mosby Ra Mosby's Raiders and a little bit of a... Of, uh, of the next game I'm actually going to get on the table. Like I said, I have not stopped NATO Nukes and Nazis. I will continue with that series. I just need to take a break. So <laughs> when that break is done, we'll jump back into NATO Nukes and Nazis with a full explanation of why I needed to take said break. So that's all I got, boys and girls. As always, appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate you listening. Questions, comments, complaints, concerns. You just want to shoot the shit? Y'all know how to get a hold of me. Subscribe, like, you know I love it. You know you love it. <laughs> I'll talk to everybody later. Hey ya. I really should stop doing that. That does sound kind of annoying. We'll see if I can stop doing that. I'll talk to everybody later. Bye.